Hey guys, over a year ago I introduced you with a theory in which Dany will sacrifice her life to save Westeros for the Long Night. She'll become the Night's Queen. However, upon rewatching the show and rereading the books over and over again, I came up to more clues and hints supporting this theory, and so I decided to update it with a few great points. Before I introduce you with the new hints and clues, let's first take a look on the clues we had before. Before we do it, let's take a quick look at who the Night's Queen even was in the first place. The Night's Queen is a legendary figure known in the Seven Kingdoms and among the Free Folk. According to a legend, the Lord Commander of the Night's Watch found in the haunted forest a cold woman with bright blue eyes. He took her to the other side of the wall and declared himself the Night's King. Their love and reign lasted for 13 years, whereupon the Free Fork rallied under the banner of a king beyond the wall and marched against the Night King's seat against the Night Fort, which resulted with the Night's King defeat with the aid of House Stark. Now that you know a little bit about the Night's Queen, let's start with a theory in which Danny will become the same queen. Earlier in Game of Thrones, we learned that the leader of the White Walkers, the Night King, is able to create other White Walkers, but it seems that he can only create one if that human being is a pure-blooded incest-born. As some kind of proof, we have a few scenes in which Craster was sacrificing his incest-born babies. We have a scene from the fourth season in which Rest places Craster's final son on the ground in the haunted forest, whereupon a White Walker approached, took the baby and then carried it towards a shattered mountain in the lands of Always of Winter. Once the White Walker approached an icy altar ringed by large icy spikes, he placed the baby upon the altar, whereupon the Night King approached, gently gathered the baby in his arms and placed his index finger upon the baby's cheek, which caused the child's eyes to turn icy blue and its skin to grow pale. This scene from the fourth episode of season 4, in my opinion, confirmed my statement that only says born pure-blooded human beings can become a White Walker, while every other human being can only become a white, a reanimated corpse raised from a death by the White Walkers to act as their minions. All of this means that the Night King could turn Danny into one of them, since Danny is a pure-blooded and born daughter of King Garrus and Queen Rella Targaryen. The greatest war, the only war that matters, is not coming anymore. It's here. Winter is here now and the seemingly only way to end the Long Night is to defeat the Night King. This would be insanely hard, but that's the way that the living will firstly go for. That's the way they're definitely going to experience, the way which will take a huge amount of casualties. The only way which will only make the undead army bigger, since all the brave soldiers that are going to fall on the battlefield against the army of the dead will be revived by the White Walkers as whites. Make no mistake, the Night King's army will go bigger and bigger by the day now that they've finally passed the wall. Their numbers will drastically grow. Upon huge losses and upon realizing that the chance of defeating the Night King is small, the living side will decide to stop fighting and will try to establish peace. We'll try to arrange a pact with the leader of the White Walkers. John and Danny will realize that the only way for the living side to end the Long Night at that point would be a pact, an agreement with the leader of the Army of the Dead, the Night King. A pact of fights and fire, an agreement that includes Danny. Have you ever wondered why is the Night King even coming south? Why was he preparing an army all those years with which he started marching south at the moment of Danny's arrival at Westeros? In this theory, Danny's arrival at Westeros is the reason of the Night King's preparations, the reason of his march south, and the reason of every single death that the Seven Kingdoms is going to confront during this long night. Before we get on all the details of this pact, it's important to highlight that Danny could have won the throne as soon as she arrived at Westeros if she wanted to. She didn't attack King's Landing because she did not want to cause death upon millions of in a greater good. Danny will agree to make a pact between the living side and the dead, an agreement in which she ends the long night by becoming the Night's Queen to the Night King, saving all the Westeros from certain death. Some might say that you cannot negotiate with the Night King and White Walkers, but that might not be true. Cresser negotiated a deal with White Walkers and as long as he provided a steady supply of sons, they agreed to leave him and his daughter wives alone. Danny will accept the pact and she will become the Night's Queen, whereupon the Night King and Danny will go beyond the wall and rule over it as a form of peace agreement between the living and the dead. Beside Danny's visions, as I've already said earlier in this video, Danny's arrival at Westeros and the Night King's preparations and his march to the south fits perfectly in timeline as well. I don't think it's coincidence that all those years the Night King was preparing and gathering huge army with which he started marching south at the same time of Danny's arrival at Westeros. Also, the fact that the show included multiple scenes that are proving that the Night King can create other White Walkers only if that human being is a pure-blooded incest-born, which Danny among the very few is, not to mention she's the only incest-born main character, has to be foreshadowing something huge. Danny will in this theory die in the hands of Jon Snow only to shortly after open her eyes as the Night's Queen. One of the most prominently accepted Game of Thrones fan theories for a while now is that Jon Snow is the modern incarnation of Azra Ahai, while Danny will likely play the role of Nyssa Nyssa in bringing the Long Night to its end. Jon Snow. The Azra Ahai legend states that during the first Long Night, a hero forged a sword made of flames named Lightbringer. Supposedly, it saved all of the humanity from the White Walkers. The forging of such a strong weapon came with a price as Azra Ahai had to thrust the sword through his own wife's living heart, so her blood, soul, strength and courage could go into the steel. 
Source also once explained that this man that reborn as Rahai will also need to pierce a sword to a loving wife's heart because great power requires great sacrifice. Yet George R. R. Martin constantly warns fans to not take these ancient legends too literally in Game of Thrones, explaining that lots of details are lost to time and have truths become facts through centuries of misinformation. What I believe is that Azur Hai did not actually kill his beloved wife to create the weapon that brought back the dawn. Rather, when her blood and soul and strength entered the sword, the process turned her into a white walker. Sounds familiar? Anyways, there's no doubt that Lightbringer as a sword that was able to kill White Walkers was made out of Valyrian steel. As most of you probably know, the secret of forging Valyrian steel was lost in the Doom of Valyria, so no one knows how people used to make these swords. However, a popular opinion is that Valyrian steel is forged with Dragonglass, since both materials are capable of destroying White Walkers. As we learned in one of Bran's flashbacks, Dragonglass can also transform living humans into White Walkers, so it's quite possible that Valyrian steel can just do the same. But why would Azor Ahai do such thing to his wife? Why would Jon Snow pierce Longclaw through Danny's heart? It's hard to believe that a single man defeated the entire army of the dead with a flaming sword he forged by killing his wife, since it's highly unlikely that Azor Ahai killed hundreds of thousands strong army of the Night King with a Lightbringer during the first long night, it's plausible that Azor Ahai chose diplomacy and peace to end it and save all of Westeros, as otherwise they probably would have all died. For centuries the great houses have been securing their political alliances with marriage, so perhaps that's exactly the best way to make peace with the of course, Danny could not just become the Night's Queen without most of people even knowing who the Night's Queen even is, meaning that for this theory to come true, we'd have to see one or two flashbacks of the first Long Night as well as of the Night's Queen herself. And not only that, but for this theory to come true, Bran would have to go back into the first Long Night to see how did the Living manage to end the Long Night. Bran would have to see the Living make a deal with the dead, but also to see Azura High piercing a Valyrian steel sword through Nissa Nissa's heart, and witness that it wasn't this famous hero who single-handedly destroyed the army of the dead with a flaming sword as a legend says, but it was rather his Valyrian steel sword that created the Night's Queen, which in fact ended the Long Night. Well, the Season 8 filming leaks seem to be confirming that it's exactly what we'll get in the final season. Reportedly, Season 8 of Game of Thrones will see one important new character played by Laura Elphinstone, and as all the media reported, she'll most likely play the Night King's wife in a flashback, I would assume. In conclusion, Dany Nissa Nissa will in this theory die in the hands of Jon Snow as Rahai and shortly after open her eyes as the Night's Queen, heading beyond the wall with the Night's King, fulfilling the Azura High prophecy, ending the long night and saving all of Westeros just as every true queen would do for her people. Not only that this theory would be one of the greatest surprises that showrunners could pull out, but it would also fit perfectly with the bittersweet ending that George R. R. Martin announced. 